let's invoke down here and then we'll make our way up there. Uh, so let's begin in English. If you know this phrase, please join us. Towards the one, the perfection of love, harmony, and beauty, the only being, united with all the illuminated souls, who form the embodiment of the Master, the Spirit of Christ. Um, so we have uh, visitors from Australia, Germany, England, uh, Scotland, Ecuador, Costa Rica, so Colorado. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's, uh, let's have the invocation uh, in German. Dem einen entgegen, der Vollkommenheit, der Liebe, der Harmonie und der Schönheit, dem einzig Seinenden, vereint mit all den erleuchteten Seelen, die den Meister, den Geist der Führung verkörpern. Bitte. Russian? Kaludino. Совершенство любви, гармонии и красоты, единосущему, единое со всеми просветленными душами, которые образуют воплощение мастера путеводный дух. sitting in the opening. There's been so much past. So much past. Decades. We've rarely sat as one. Here we are. There's only one. Welcome. All of us. Welcome to one. May Sam, in his spirit, guide us to the one. May each of us, in our spirit, guide us to the one. The funny thing about life is we only become more of who we are. The question is who? Who? So, welcome. It's been quite a journey to get to this moment. And I want to say that on the journey to this moment, just one little teeny statistic. If we look at the number of coordinators who have been in service to Lama since the beginning, over half have 
mixed in with the Rohana. We've been traveling as though we were two separate groups. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> <laughs> we're one. And it's time, it's time for us to look within ourselves, to look within our groups, groupings, and come to one. How can we become one? How? Life is the answer. I guess we just got to keep showing up as one. So I want to welcome all of you, and I want to welcome you so much. Thank you. Thank you. In particular, <coughs> for what you've had to go through, <laughs> <laughs> with all the us and them and with all the separation and all the edges I want to thank you for your grace to stay with us and be kind <laughs> and you have you have kept being kind thank you well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, class dismissed. <laughs> uh, wow, thank you, though. Thank you so much. Thank you for welcome, welcoming us in the heart. Uh, my first visit to Lama was in a, a green Volkswagen van uh, outfitted uh, as our home. Uh, with uh, another person uh, who's now named Sarah Morgan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we were driving across the country to go be with Merchant Sam. But we stopped here, and that was our first visit in 1969. Uh, so uh, connected, well, because where we were coming from was uh, we had lived with Baba Ramdas, so connected to this place uh, through his connection to this place and the blessing of his stream and then going to this other stream which uh, a year year and a year and a half later ended up being here and coming here year after year and helping build things and uh, always visiting uh, my own teacher and this great place of pilgrimage uh, Murshid Sam had an extraordinary ability when he would go to the shrines of saints uh, to receive guidance in a very direct and manifest form. And uh, you read his diaries, they're extraordinary and delightful and instructive. And when he came, after visiting the East two times, uh, when he came back, he shared with us that he felt it would be a blessing if there were more shrines in America, more places where people could go on pilgrimage to receive blessing. And uh, he expressed that it was his wish that his place would be just that. Uh, like I said, uh, down the hill, we had no idea he would die. You know. I was with him, when I, I slept over at the house when he fell down the stairs, I took him to the hospital. Uh, even then, still had no idea. Uh, even after he wrote his final letter, uh, which he says, this has been a glorious exit, one which will go down in history, I still didn't think he would die. Uh, and it's interesting uh, that before he died, he was uh, teaching us from a text that a commentary he'd written on a night con, uh, life after death, uh, and uh, called Akibat, and he kept. Re what I remembered is he kept harping, the connection between the teacher and the student is in no way dependent on one or the other being in the body. Uh, and so uh, naively, when he did die, then I thought, well, that's what he said. I'm gonna go that way. Uh, and, uh, you know, 
uh, it's a difference. There's no doubt, you know, having the short, scruff, the great Baraka blessing force in front of me was different than the inner world, uh, but otherwise connections unbroken. And it's always odd to me that since he's everywhere in my, from my point of view, or what I'm looking for, guidance, is everywhere, why do I go on pilgrimage? Uh, so uh, I still ask that question, but I still go on pilgrimage, uh, and I love going on pilgrimage. And, and uh, I, I'm certain that part of the reason for pilgrimage is the journey itself, not the, uh, where you put your head down, but the whole journey, uh, part of that journey of surrendering yourself for, for service and for kindness and uh, for caring for sentient beings and uh, working uh, to improve conditions. <coughs> Uh, I love coming here, and this place has been a pilgrimage place from the day he was interred. Uh, so it's already that, uh, without question. And so many people have found uh, guidance and friendship and acceptance uh, walking up this mountain, coming to this place, finding refuge on Lama Mountain, uh, falling in uh, to the this the system of Lama and the friendship and the fresh air and the high altitude. Uh, so uh, I've also spent many, many, many time, many, much time in India, Mother India, and visiting the shrine of uh, Murshid Sam's teacher, Hazrat Anayat Khan. And uh, when my wife and I went there uh, in 1976, we lived by his shrine by the Sufi shrines, Nizamuddin Ali, Amir Khusro, uh, for four months. And daily, you know, it was a daily, a daily journey, and uh, it was a very romantic time that way. Uh, living very close to the earth, we were hippies, we had no money, you know. Uh, we didn't have hot water one day, it was all, you know, cold, uh, on and on. But we would go to Anayat Khan's tomb every day. It was open to the sky, it was quite modest. It was great to go there, just like it's great to go here. But you couldn't stay there all day. You couldn't sit out in the sun. You, you know, you couldn't make retreat there. Uh, so you could connect directly. Uh, so in the 80s, uh, one of an icon's very close uh, devotees bought the land around the shrine, built a beautiful, uh, shrine, a covering. Uh, those of you who have been there, it's so comfortable to be there. The air smells of roses. You can sit all day and, and have retreat. You can sit for a week there. You can come day and night, do zikr. Uh, the, the element, you're protected from the elements. And enjoying that and, and seeing what it did to increase the capacity for Anayat Khan to give guidance at the place of pilgrimage inspired me, or, or I can't say that's, I, I don't think it's my idea uh, at all, but I'll, I'll take claim for it, but I, I mean, you know, a responsibility for it. But uh, so I felt Murshid uh, pushing me, uh, you know, fix up the place, make it so people can, so, can be more comfortable there and have retreat there. And this was the inspiration for the shrine. Uh, I, I had it for a number of years. Uh, but in 2007, it really kind of uh, flooded into me. And uh, I, I got together with one of our Murshid's uh, Kabir kids, who's an artist, and said, OK, uh, this is kind of. And so he, he painted something. It wasn't what I exactly looked but it was. And then I wrote to a Lama and said, this is what's up for me, you know. Can we work on this? And so since 2007 till today, we've had that process. Uh, and uh, I was so pleased that in 2011, uh, uh, Lama wrote to me, uh, I think it was Tom, T Tomas who wrote to me, who was at that point the head of the little Darga committee, which was assigned to be the subcommittee for the board to, you know, gather information, and wrote and said, 
Uh, we know this great architect. His name's Eric Dowd. Uh, you know, would you would you consider using him? So uh, uh, Eric's been our architect. Uh, he he caught he caught the the fragrance much better than I could describe it. Uh, he's a jewel to work with. Uh, I, I genuinely feel that when you make a, when you improve the conditions for pilgrimage, that that improves the conditions for everything else. So that means the conditions for a Lama, in my mind, it'll bring more prosperity to Lama, or whatever the prosperity might not be the right word, but more capacity to serve. It'll, it'll help in every way. Uh, that's my own feeling. Uh, by, by creating, it's not like, oh, we're going to do this, it'll take away from that. To me, by doing this, it'll expand the capacity for this place to serve humanity. Uh, not to take anything away, but to add to it. Uh, that's my genuine uh, feeling uh, and guidance, and and I, I hope for that uh, genuinely, uh, because I care about this place and uh, continue to come here uh, for sustenance. Uh, and there's so many uh, other people who've worked so hard on this, and uh, I especially <coughs> uh, want to recognize uh, Sadiq, who's behind me, uh, who's been uh, like a pillar of uh, this collaboration. Uh, and what you said, Tomas, uh, it's my genuine hope that uh, we become a quilt, you know, that the Rohaniyat and Lama, I mean, we're going to need our separate boards because we need, you know, just like a committee to take care of this and that, but that we have been a quilt and to recognize that this quilt nature, we're intertwined. Uh, I don't know how it happened. He, his body ended up here and that in, entwined us so, so uh, you know, Sadi, how many retreats have you led up here for the last 30 years, you know, 40 years and, and, and so on. And, uh, so, and so many of the coordinators connected with our family. So, so uh, it's my aspiration as well. So, so I just like to not speak anymore, but uh, let the, you know some of our elders speak, especially Asha and Sadiq, who are who are here in 1969 when I showed up. They, you know. Well, this morning I, was, I knew Shabda was going to ask me to talk this morning, so <laughs> this is a second, second a, a repetition of it, but. I was concerned about this. I was concerned about all the things that some of the Lama <coughs> residents and and board have been concerned about, and I was concerned about the Rohaniyat, and I was concerned about Shabda's enormous, whatever you want to call it. You're <laughs> <laughs> not going to take it anyway. <laughs> whatever is in your heart, you can just think it. But send him love, too, because he's gone through a lot. And, um, and, and, and I, wish, I just want to put a blessing on all of the people who were not treated so well in the conflicts that come with any new project. You know, I mean, the, the, okay. the anger has come up. And so basically when I got here, there was this whole talk about Lama being split. Well, honestly, if they're split, it sure hasn't felt like it this week. And so I feel like that, the, 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 that everybody's heart, when people meet each other, it just melts because there's nobody here who isn't on the positive side. Everybody here is, as Tomas beautifully said, one. So the only thing I have to add to what Tomas said is the, um, the reality that everything changes. <laughs> and as we get, as we move on, it seems like it changes more because all these other people come along and have ideas. You know? <laughs> so I suffered from founder syndrome here for many, many years. I would come here, I don't know if Bird is here, but she had all her pictures up in the kitchen and I can't stand a crowd of pictures. So I got a compatriot <laughs> who couldn't stand them and I took them all down. That's what the founder syndrome does. You know, it hurt her terribly. 
And I feel like that this is a much larger community place, you know, where people don't want any kind of change. But anyway, what, what I remembered was the stupas up and down this valley and up mm -hmm. into Colorado. And all those blessing places, which I like to go to because they're just like here for me. I mean, I knew Sam and I, you know, and the stupa is more towards emptiness, for sure. But it gets, they get relics in them. You know, and the relics are kind of the same as Sam's bones. So, wow, how great that this whole area has a north-south stream of places that are open 24 hours a day. Nico has one. I just asked him. His place, which is a place of prayer, is open 24 hours a day. You know, go down to Santa Fe. There are several stupas in that area. And there are churches. I hope there are some Christian churches which don't lock their doors at night or during the day when it's not Sunday. I don't know because I don't, I haven't explored it. But I know Chimayo is there. You know, many people come for pilgrimage. Tons, tons, yeah, actually, literally tons of people come <laughs> <laughs> here and do walking pilgrimages there from afar. As a matter of fact, we had a group here who did a walking pilgrimage all the way to Chimayo to pray. None of them were Christian, you know. So whatever people's religion is has very little to do with what this is about. This is a place, for me anyway, about pilgrimage places where people can tune into the light, tune into the space, tune into this beautiful planet, and love one another. I mean, we have to do, we have to really love one another before we can love God. And we can't love God until we know the longing of how beautiful it is to be with your family. <laughs> you know, and then basically it all comes in, but it comes in easier if you're not surrounded by a lot of people doing their personalities. And this is a place in which we drop our personalities and become pretty authentic because there's just too much history here. And I think that this is true. I don't know if you know about the stupas, but, you know, 20, 30 people spend weeks and weeks making these tiny little things. Or the Muslims, you know, five times a day they're praying. How many people can get up before dawn every day? You know, making this beauty in the world, it doesn't just stay where it happens. It goes everywhere. So what was that harmonic thing I was thinking about? See, we were talking somehow about Fibonacci spirals and harmonics. Every heart here is sending out waves, you know? And I can feel it here. There's, there's harmonics that go on here among the hearts, you know? So, I say welcome as the person everybody thanks for Mama. And um, <laughs> I used to, you know, people would say thank you and I go, it wasn't me. <laughs> but then I realized that if people say, um, a gift not received is not given, mm -hmm. which I want to mm -hmm. pass on to all other people who will not mm -hmm. receive thank you and say, oh, it was everybody else. And then you, you said thank you, and it was like you didn't even get to feel it, really. Mm -hmm. So thank you, everybody. Mm -hmm. Please feel my gratitude for loving Lama and for making it a better place. It's just so amazing. So amazing. I'm, I think I'm over founder syndrome. I still have opinions, but I think I'm over that culture. <laughs> Aside from dear friends, Sadiq, you want to say something? Mm -hmm. well, my interest in the dark here was that uh, I wanted to be up here in the middle of a thunderstorm in the rain um, or in the bright sun and um, so I mentioned the selfish reasons first <laughs> because uh, one can argue a lot about principles and this and that and the other thing but that's that's the root of my wish to see this structure built is that I want to be able to be up here in all kinds of weather including lightning storms. <laughs> when I was living in the Muffin House, which exists no longer, we used to hear coyotes 
up here. And uh, walking up one morning after such a night, it was obvious that there had been these creatures on the dance ground yeah. mm -hmm. doing whatever they do. <laughs> and they had dug at the foot of several trees. They had uh, done their thing and had been sleeping there overnight. And I, all I could think of is, well, Merchant was an old coyote. <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, it's very fitting that they were here uh, where he was buried. Um, he initiated, on his, I believe it was on his first visit, he claimed to have initiated us into the Mahamudra. And one of us fell asleep. <laughs> I'd never experienced a practice like that. I couldn't remember what it was. It took me another 15 to 20 years to figure out what it was. In the meantime, I gathered what the word means, great gesture, and was late for the evening sit in the prayer room. And the sign was turned and said, go in peace. <laughs> so I went around to the downhill side of the prayer room and sat. And it was very clear that we were not on the mountain looking down. We were on the foot of the mountain looking out. And it was our responsibility for the blessings that might go out here. That was my first experience of Mahavudra, which was not the practice that Mershik gave. Mm -hmm. It's also known as the three jhanas. Um, and I had been exposed to that in San Francisco, but I didn't see that that was also called the Mahavudra. Can everybody hear me? <coughs> okay. I don't really have much else to say except that I want to read a poem that Merchant wrote in 1927. He was 28 years old at the time. And those of you who bridle with the use of the generic male <coughs> nouns like brotherhood and mankind will have to forgive the time that he wrote. God calls. The bells ring in the temple. The perfume rises from the aloes. The sage in meditation sits. Om, tat, sat. The nothingness of the now, the everythingness of eternity. God calls. God calls, the Muzin's voice from Minaret Tower cries, come to prayer, come to prayer, come to prayer. A million Muslims then stretch out their prayer rugs. A million and a million, a myriad million more. There is no God but God. To this I now bear witness, there is no God but God. Muhammad is his prophet, come to prayer. God calls. God calls. On Friday Eve, the Jew prepares himself, walks to his synagogue and prays, takes down the Torah scroll and reads, reads what his forefathers read. Hear, O Israel, the Lord, our God, the Lord is one. And his name is one. This is the law and the prophets. God calls. God calls. 
The stations slowly passing one by one. She tells her beads and tells them over and over. Ave Maria, gratia plena. Ora, ora pro nobis. Pater noster qui est in celis. Sanctificetur tu nomen. Sanctificetur, sanctificetur. God calls. God calls. The branches rustle lightly in the breeze above the music of the pagoda's bells. His humble repast finished, ere it is noon, the bhikshu tells the children of the Buddha. They listen, one voice speaks in the forest. Then all is silent, save the breeze. There slowly comes that feeling of great peace. Shanti. 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 God calls. God calls. The men from every race have come together from every land, from every sect or cult. They gather at the temple for their worship. Love ye every man his neighbor. <coughs> Be ye brethren, ye who are my brothers. Worship him, the Father of us all. Worship him in love and faith and joy. Worship him in silence. God calls. Samuel L. Lewis, 1927. Mm. This is uh, uh, one of our uh, Dear uh, beloved <coughs> senior teachers, Mershid Saadi, who has a very long history with this place. Uh, he, and come from, he flew here from Edinburgh uh, with his wife, Natalia. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I'll just say a few words again personally. Pretty much everyone else has said what I would say. Um, there are so few places of, you could say, sacred, sacred power places. Uh, in uh, of this sort uh, in North America, uh, where there is a lineage behind them, and it's it's hard to to underestimate the amount of influence these places have, because mostly we don't keep track of you know the history of this. The history is all in our in our in memory in people's memory. No one writes these things down. Um, I was up here the first time in 1982. Uh, when the Makbara was pretty much dissolving into the hillside. It wasn't leveled like this. You couldn't sit like this around. It was sort of like going downhill. And each time there was erosion, a little bit less of the Makbara appeared until you had this little pile of stones left relative to what we see now. So Wali Ali at that point had, was the one with the vision and he said, let's take up a group of Miris up there for a month. We'll level this whole place. We'll each you know, carry these quartz stones down on our backs from higher up the mountain, which is what we did. We were there for a month. We leveled the dance ground using lines and plumb lines and all of this. That was all just, you know, sort of unorganized hillside. Um, two years later, I started with uh, Taz, Reverend Tazneen Fernandez, who's a merchant in the Sufi order in the West. We started to have dances of universal peace camps up here. And that was as a result of the, the vision that was this person received when I was here in 82 for the month helping Wally. I was the grunt laborer, you know, helping rebuild this place. And I, we were going to set up a, a school of the dance, of the Dances of Universal <coughs> Peace uh, in San Francisco, and we had started on that. But while I was here, I had the vision from Merchid Network. And then nobody in 1982 knew what a network was. <laughs> there were no social networks. There was no internet. <laughs> there was nothing. But the, uh, the vision was, 
the network, the spreading out, not necessarily the, the place of vision is, is the center. But you don't have to have a physical location uh, of, of an office or a land or this or this. We've already got this. This is the center of Baraka. Let's just all go for the network. And this was the start of the, really the dance of spreading in a big, in a big way worldwide. Uh, many people who never became Sufis, who never became initiates, who never even knew Sufi, uh, were touched by the dances in this way. We started to have these dance camps up here uh, for about 10 years, from 84, basically until the fire we were here. Um, every year, every year. It was open, open to everyone. People came, people went. I don't remember all the people's names. One guy came here, Estafirullah, I don't remember his name. He had a vision here. Murshid, he knew that Lama needed uh, to Lama to survive, they needed to have power. We didn't know. He was wealthy. He paid for the whole power station down here. Wow. Mm. Out of his pocket. That's why you have this, this, en this enigmatic mm. prescription. This, uh, saying, uh, pouring yourself out makes the universe do the same. That was I was teaching from that book that year. Um, one of the books I wrote from Desert Wisdom. I don't remember the guy's name. He never became a Sufi. Oh. Um, things like that go on and on and on and on. <clears throat> so I, you know, so many, I can tell you so many stories just that I know of people who've been here and had visions. And what is, you know, what do we really need now? I mean, it's not about honoring a person, it's about having a place where there can be vision. As Thomas Berry says, we need dreams. We need places of dreaming, dreaming the solution that the earth needs. This is a place where those sorts of things happen and have happened. Um, yes, you can say every place on the earth is sacred. Absolutely, every place is sacred. But they're sacred in different ways. And this is a place where anybody who comes, Sufi, non-Sufi, non-anything, they can feel something. Absolutely. And there, I can tell you, very few places like this. Not only here, but around the planet. These places are conflicted in the Middle East, in the, in the Eastern Asia. Sufi shrines are being bulldozed as we sit here by fundamentalists, literally. I'm, I'm not kidding you. Ancient, ancient shrines, places of Baraka. Come on. Um, you know, so this is something for our generation to do. Um, this is my feeling. So, you know, I'm putting my yes to it. I just want to say that Kathy works underground. <laughs> she has a complete realization from the clouds and the sky and whatever it is. But she works underground and tries to hide. It was a generous act of her to come over here. It was just because she knew I would embarrass her more. <laughs> <laughs> but um, let us allow her to stay in. <laughs> <laughs> she also wears a pink wig. <laughs> She has remained the person who stitches together, all right, well this isn't working, or you're saying this, why don't we try this next, why don't we meet at my place? She continues to hold tea ceremony as a space where people keep coming together and keep hashing things out, and you are truly a tea master without the teacup. Thank you. Uh, this is uh, Malik, uh, been my close friend for 35 years, I think. Anyway, a longer time and uh, had so much experience uh, that brought him to this day. Uh, and he's our uh, project manager, uh, elegant and dignified and deep practitioner and uh, knowledgeable and wise. And just want to give you a chance to say a few words. <clears throat> One word, just two words, just be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Eric, did you want to share anything? Um, well, throughout the whole process, uh, it's, it's been a great honor to, to listen. And uh, I feel like I'm the scribe and just have channeled. Uh, and it's, it's, it's like dreaming. You, you bring down the work. But it's not from me. It's from, you know, above and all of us. So it's a very humbling place to sit. So I thank, I thank you all. My name is Ravi, and I had the great fortune to be a resident here for five cycles. And as Ravi Hunter would say, I'm a lifer. <laughs> I've fallen so hopelessly in love here, I can never, I hope I never untangle myself in this lifetime or the next lifetime. And I got to actually live in the house closest to this facility and made my own little trail to come over here and used to spend weeks at a time in the Montbar Hermitage. And I'm utterly a different person for that experience and have so much gratitude for all that, you know, made just that opportunity, that possibility available for someone like me. And, um, when I first heard about this project, I was in the middle of um, being the resident liaison for my second project, this, the sauna building. And um, this felt like just such a huge, immense project at the time, bigger than I could understand or even imagine. And I've watched how the universe has brought more and more people to hold hands in this circle and how the circle has grown. And especially when Eric and Malik came into this project, it just felt like the amount of blessing, the, um, the extraordinary outpouring has just grown and grown and grown. I thought it was a great project at the beginning, but that was way back then. Um, and that we're doing something for those who haven't come here yet. For someone who has no idea what any of this is, that they can come up here and sit here and kapowie. <laughs> you know, the love opens and comes in and we see the world in a different way. And I feel so much gratitude that after all these years that we can all sit here and just feel this incredible structure formulating from our hearts before it formulates physically. And, um, you know, the wind blows hard on this mountain sometimes, you know, like right here when the wind blows, it's really, can be just crazy. But the wind isn't always blowing. And when the wind stops, that calmness after the wind stops and we might see a rainbow or something, I feel so blessed to be in this body, in this planet, at this time space. Um. <clears throat> Thank everyone for being here and I do just really feel this strong calling to recognize all of the um, difficulty and struggle that continues in the Lama community and uh, between Lama beans around this project, but just in our own hearts and relationships. Um, and how that has also impacted the relationship between or within the Rohanyat and Lama Foundation. And I just really want to acknowledge and bless and pray for all the voices that they, that they are heard and are part of this blessing ceremony. 
um, that they are our family, everyone. And I just really want to acknowledge the part of this ceremony of healing, but also of finding that way that all our family can, can be one in movement around it. Um, and Rahman asked me to read a brief prayerful letter. Beloveds, first to tell Asha that I counted 105 new long-leafed cottonwoods and to be sure I miss some that have joined the Lama community since the fire. Meditating on our mountain, at our spring, the Rio Grande Gorge that carries the water that is the lifeblood of our region, I realize that my body is the same as landscape. Everybody's body is the same as landscape. What makes the body is from landscape, and when the time comes, it will be returned. Healing the land we heal, damaging the land we get sick. I pray for more life, all our relations, not less. Healthy bodies is where we begin. This I pray for. Love, Rahman. Thank you. Thank you. could I invite you to stand at the foot of the grave and go for it? have been connected to them through Lama, you know, for the last 40 some years, but uh, our native elder is Darvesha for today. <laughs> <laughs> so I just want to make a prayer uh, with the land, and I, I want to name and call in this whole uh, mountain valley, the, weird, the land that is holding us. And I'm not going to ask you to stand up and turn with me. I'll, I'll just do the turning. But I just want us to, uh, to feel that uh, the sense of reciprocity, that we come to this land humbly in the, in the spirit of reciprocity, uh, asking for blessings from this land that has held us so beautifully that it continued to hold us and that it continue to afford passage for us as we find our way in this evolution, that the way be opened, and that we understand how to co-create with this land. I'd like to name and call in and send blessings to the east, to these mountains, Lama Mountain, and Flag Mountain, the south, the Himas, to the west, the Rio Grande, to the north, Mount Blanco, where the crest stones and the Sangre de Cristo meet, the heavens, the earth, and this center, this aperture now, where we stand, the whole blessing of our lineage coming through the energy of Sam Lewis, this moment, this center heart, where we are, where we at this moment, rededicate ourselves, recommit ourselves to give back all these blessings that we continually receive. To be the, to shine the light of Allah for the benefit of all. Amen and Spaha. Spaha. With your permission, let's sing a little here. Let's go down and do the Kalama dance and then uh, uh, have some of the ice cream version. <laughs> so, uh, Sri Ram.
come alive between our feet and our heads, come into our bodies. Come into our bodies and make our bodies a prayer. We do this all the time, but I'm not sure we all are embodied when we make our prayer. So let that vibration of that bug feel like the current in your body. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can laugh, but actually it is a little like that. <laughs> and then your central spine, the central channel, you know, coming from the bottom of your sacrum up to the top of your head. And then let all those nerves go from your central channel out to your skin and feel your skin and all the feelings on your shirt and on your pants and on the bottom of your feet. And then join this current to the current of the earth that goes down to the center. I hear it's lead. Iron? Thank you. It's iron. And then just bring it up. Bring it to the crown of your head and take a breath and hold the breath and hold the energy of the breath up in your crown. As you let your breath out, just leave the energy in your crown. And feel with me the deep wish for sisters and brothers to come together in love. ideas not to become personal, but to look for the best solution. For consensus becoming a way of looking and discovering what is the best way to do something. So that rather than have to have the will run our lives, let us let surrender, compromise, it possible for us to get along in the world. So I'd just like to ask, ask everybody to ground this and raise your hand as an agreement that it's a good idea. <laughs> Nobody's looking at you if you don't want to raise your hand. <laughs> 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 uh, uh, deep gratitude for uh, uh, to each and every person uh, who's been in this process, who's brought their love and kindness, and uh, like Rebecca did to to uh, honor that we all haven't agreed, but uh, we've all done our best to bring our heart to this process and I want to continue to commit to bring our heart to this process and uh, thank you all for being here together and sharing in your heart and sharing this uh, blessing ceremony and may whatever arises from it be an extraordinarily wonderful blessing and guidance for humanity and not just for humanity, but for all beings on all planes, known and unknown, in all solar systems, <coughs> in all galaxies, in all whatever there is, uh, may it be a blessing. And uh, it, it, I think it, it would only be fitting that we go to the dance circle and sing the column and dan dance the column and dance, and then go have ice cream. So. <laughs> See you on the dance circle. Three circles, come on, make circles. <laughs>